Hello, my name is Rory and I'll be doing this tutorial on a basic introduction to LaTeX. This is intended for college students starting to write assignments in LaTeX and is a very basic tutorial on how to get started. There are a load of complex things you can do using downloadable versions of LaTeX, but I'll be using a site called Overleaf because it's free, it saves all of your projects, there's no limit on the number of projects you can make, and it has everything you'll need for any homework assignment. I'll cover everything that I've used for my homework assignments, but if there's something specific that I don't cover here, it's really easy to find what you need online. Okay, to make a new project, you simply click New Project. Uh, I always go for a blank project since I've made my own template for my assignments. Uh, but if you want, you can look through the different templates that are here, and you might see one that you, that you prefer. Uh, I'll just call this Introduction to LaTeX. Okay, so first off, I'll just go through the different things you can see on the screen here. Uh, this stuff on the left is for files and folders within the project. I personally don't use this because I just make a new project for each of my assignments. Um, but if you, if you want to have all your all, all your assignments in one project instead, that's fine. But I'll just go ahead and hide it. Uh, this arrow here brings you back to the screen I was just on, the list of your projects. Um, the recompile button is for whenever you make a change in your code and you want it to appear on the PDF. Uh, you can set it to auto-compile if you'd like, or you can press Control enter if you want to save yourself the hassle of pressing the button every time. Uh, and this button here downloads your completed PDF. Okay, whenever you make a new project, uh, this is the default layout that it gives you. Uh, like I said before, I have my own template, which I'm just pasting here. Uh, if you'd like, you can copy this or you can tweak it a little bit, uh, or you can make your own if you don't like this one. Uh, I'll just explain each of these lines here. Uh, the first line is just for setting the page and font size, as well as the page type. Uh, the next two lines are for packages that I like to use uh, to import stuff that aren't in the standard version of LaTeX. Uh, the AMS sim package, uh, I mainly use it for the N, the, the fancy looking N, Z, Q and OR letters that denote number sets, as well as the therefore symbol. Um, and the AMS math package is mainly for equations and stuff, like if you're uh, for derivations or proofs, or if you're uh, manipulating an equation to get an answer that you need, uh, or if you're grouping, if you're like grouping equations and you want it to look nice, uh, this package is good for that kind of stuff. Uh, the fourth line is just a command that I set to make it easier to type uh, the fancy letters I was talking about in this package. Uh, I'll talk about new commands near the end. Um, the fifth line uh, begins the document and then the last line uh, ends it uh, and everything in between is the stuff that appears on the PDF. The next four lines are for these headings that you can see here. Uh, the code and the name of the module of your assignment uh, as well as the number and due date of the assignment uh, and then your name, your student number and your course. Um, this is all the information you'll ever need to put on your assignments, if not way more. Um, the next few lines here are just for the plagiarism declaration. Uh, you might not need to put these on your assignments. Um, your lecturer will tell you if you need to put them on. Okay, here we have um, a passage from the prologue of the Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. I'll just be using this to show you how line breaks, spacing, paragraphs, indents, headings, all that kind of stuff to do with text work. Um, even though there's no maths here, uh, this is still important because all of the stuff that I'm about to go over uh, still applies to maths, like when you're typing up maths, especially the spacing. Okay, say you want to start a new paragraph. You want to bring something to the next line with an indent. Uh, you might think that you just start on the next line, uh, but if I recompile here, you'll notice that this makes no difference at all, that the text is the exact same as well as before. Um, there are two ways to start a new paragraph. Uh, one way is to just skip a line instead of just going on to the next line in the code. So we just go on to the next line here. You'll notice that this line uh, goes starts a new paragraph. Uh, you can also type the command slash par, and that'll type that'll bring the next bit of text onto the, onto a new paragraph. Uh, the main difference, of course, between slash par and skipping a line is slash par stay that like, keeps all the text on the same line of code. Uh, so if you want to, you can type out a whole novel in just one line of code by just using slash par, uh, but I prefer to skip a line instead because it makes it like look kind of similar to the text itself. Now say you want to start a new paragraph, but you don't want an indent, you just want to bring the text onto the next line. Um, the quick and easy way to do that is by just doing a double backslash. And again, similar to slash par, it keeps it on the same line. As so you can see here, this brings it onto the next line, but it doesn't do an indent. Another way of um, making a new paragraph no indent is by typing the command slash par and then slash no indent. And that'll do the exact same thing. 
Uh, but I much prefer to do the back the double backslash just because it's it's far more convenient. Uh, it takes up a lot less space. Okay, next I'll just move on to how uh, spacing works in LaTeX. Um, so one thing you'll notice about LaTeX is that spacing works weird. Um, uh, what I mean by that is uh, often extra spaces aren't counted uh, in your code. Uh, if you have at least one space in between words, it'll come up as exactly one space in the PDF. I'll show you what I mean here. If I put an extra space here, an extra two here, and then I don't know, an extra three there, and then put this onto the next line, and then I don't know, put ten spaces here, or whatever, however many, um, you'll notice that um, none of this changes the text at all. All this text is ex the exact same as it was before. Uh, indents in your code work the same way. So say if we, I don't know, have loads of indents here, um, and I don't know, put this onto the next line and then put this back a bit, whatever. Uh, you'll notice that this ch text doesn't change at all, except for this bit here, which we moved on to the next line. Uh, all this text is the exact same. Uh, so indents in your code are pretty much just for organizing your code and making it look neat uh, instead of actually um, indents on the document itself. Uh, say we want to space paragraphs out, uh, like we don't want a new paragraph, like we want a new paragraph, but we don't want it kind of joined up to the to the paragraph before it, like these all are. Uh, the command for this is slash v space, uh, which uh, stands for vertical space, uh, followed by uh, the actual space that you want in between the paragraphs in curly brackets. Um, I always use four millimeters, but you can use whatever you want. Uh, this command won't really work if uh, if there's no line skip before it. So I'll show you what I mean here. If I just go on to the next line and use the command, uh, it doesn't quite work how we want to do. Um, you can see here that like we want this bit here. My mother told me we want that to be the start of the new paragraph. Uh, but you can see here that it doesn't really work out the way we want it to. Kind of work, It's a bit weird. Um, so what we can do is, uh, what you have to do is start a new paragraph. So again, you can either skip a line like this. Or what you can do is, if you really want to keep on the same line, you can type slash par and then slash p space, and then just to be different, we'll do one centimeter, one centimeter. And you'll see that this spaces out uh, the exact same as just skipping a line. Okay, now say for example we want to put on headings onto this. We want to put um, prologue and a Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. Um, the main commands that I would suggest uh, would be slash section which is for the main heading, so we'll just call this Game of Thrones. And then a slash subsection, which is similar, just kind of smaller. And call it prologue. Okay, um, you might think this works, but uh, it actually numbers it, uh, which we don't want. Uh, in this example here, we don't want these headings numbered. Uh, and, we, and we also want these centered. Uh, so to get rid of the numbering, all you have to do is just put an asterisk before the uh, open curly bracket on each of these. And it'll get rid of the numbering here. And there's a few ways you can do centering. Uh, you can type slash center before the text. Uh, it's center spelled the American way, unfortunately. Uh, you can type cent slash, slash center before the text you want centered. Uh, but if we do that, it's gonna center all of this text, which we don't want, if it compiles. Um, if we just want to center the heading, uh, we don't want to do this. So what we'll do instead is we can type uh, slash. Yeah, there's two ways actually you can do this. You can type slash begin center, center uh, and then slash end center uh, on either sides of the text that you want centered. And center the headings here. Or what you can do is you can type slash center in the curly brackets. Uh, and uh, this doesn't carry over to outside the curly brackets. It only, when every type of command in between curly brackets, it only stays in those curly brackets and it doesn't carry over. Um, so if I recompile the text, it doesn't change at all. It stays the exact same. Okay, so just there, I introduced the section and subsection commands. Uh, I mainly use these for uh, question labeling. Uh, so I usually do question number as a section and then do the question part as a subsection. Um, so say if I want to do question one, part one and two, and then question two, which is on its own. Uh, you can just type out your answers in between each of these. So I'll just type answer. And 
and see it comes out quite nicely. Um, yeah, that's what I mainly use the section and subsection uh, commands for. Uh, there are other um, commands that you can use for headings and all that. There's millions of them. I won't bother going over them because I because I think these look fine. Okay, so if you want to do italics or bold text or underline text, uh, the commands for these are fairly straightforward. Uh, italics is just slash text it with the text in curly brackets after it. Uh, bold is slash text bf. Oops. And then underline is just slash underline with the text after the curly brackets. Uh, if you want to do a combination of the three, um, actually just recompile it and show you what it looks like. Um, if you want to do a combination of the three, it doesn't matter what order you put them in, uh, just as long as you have the right number of curly brackets. Um, yes, that's what that looks like with all three. And it doesn't matter, say, if I change this to italics and this one to bold, uh, you'll see that it doesn't change this at all. Okay, say you want to change the size of the text you're working with. Uh, there are a load of commands, which I'll just, I'll just type them out all here. Uh, there's tiny, there's slash script size. Um, there's footnote size. There's small. Um, there's normal size. There's large with lowercase l. There's large with capital L. Uh, there's large in all caps. There is huge with lowercase h. And there's huge with capital H. Uh, so there are all the different sizes of the text you can use. And these commands work slightly differently. Uh, than the other text commands, uh, like the the bold, the, the italics, and the underline, and then the section and subsection. Um, they don't need curly brackets the same way that these ones do. Uh, I'll show you what I mean here. So if I just type, let's just put a bit of space in between them. If I just type out some random sentence. Um, you'll see that this text is huge, uh, because the last time that we defined it, we defined the text size, it was huge. Uh, if we want to get around this, we can just type slash normal size. And it'll change it'll change the text back to normal. Uh, say if we only want um, this word here, text, just to be large, um, lowercase l large, just for example. Um, if we do slash large and then surround this in curly brackets, you might think that that would work, but it actually doesn't. Uh, it makes everything that comes after it large, so you see that it's slightly bigger. Actually, I thought I might just change it to uh, all caps large. And um, you'll see that this text is actually, it's not, not just this word text is bigger than the rest. It's actually, it like we define, we said large here, so it considers everything after it uh, large. Uh, the way we get around this is we can uh, either, there's two ways of getting around it. Uh, we can just specify this, the size of the text that we want each time we want it to change. Uh, so say if we want the first bit normal size and the second half um, large, all caps, for example. Actually, just put a bit of space. And you'll see that like we just typed out normal size and then wrote out this text and then typed out slash large when we wanted to change. Uh, or say if you're writing out like a lot of text and you only want like one bit of the text to be a different size. Um, the way you can get around that without having to type out each time it changes um, is, I'll just redefine this as normal size. Um, I'll type it again. Say if we only want, again, like we said before, if you only want this word here, text, to be large. And um, we do surround it with curly brackets, but we put in the command inside the curly brackets. So uh, similar to the center command that we did up here, 
um, it only works like if if it's placed in in between curly brackets, it only makes everything inside the curly brackets uh, center. Uh, and so the same here for large text. So you see, this only makes. Uh, oh, actually, I forgot to just put this space in this. Yeah, and you see that it only makes this word uh, large, and the rest is the size that we defined it previously, which is normal size. Uh, there's one more thing that I'll show you uh, before we move on to maths. Uh, just the command slash new page, which you might guess starts a new page. Um, yeah, and then this text, everything they type after it will be on a new page. Okay, now let's move on to math mode. Uh, math mode has two main modes inside itself, uh, inline mode and display mode. Uh, inline mode is mainly just for uh, maths, kind of like in a paragraph or like uh, like that's within some text. So say if you're like describing an equation and you want to use the equation within a sentence, uh, you'd use inline mode. And then display mode is like for everything else, like when you'd have little or no text, uh, like say for equations or stuff, or um, pretty much most of the maths you'd be doing uh, that you wouldn't need to be explaining. Uh, there's two ways of activating inline mode. You can either surround the equation or whatever maths you want uh, with two dollar signs, or you can surround it with uh, backslash open and backslash uh, closed uh, round brackets. Um, I'll show you what I mean here. I'll just type out some random equation to a plus b equals c in both of these. Um, I'll just put these on different lines. And you can see both of these look the exact same. Uh, display mode is activated by either four dollar signs and then putting your equation in between in the middle. And then uh, it can also be activated by a backslash square bracket. Uh, display mode automatically centers anything that's inside it. So you'll see here, these are automatically centered. Um, even though there are two ways of doing inline mode and two ways of doing display mode, uh, I would highly recommend uh, using the backslash bracket commands rather than the dollar signs, uh, because the dollar signs are prone to a lot more mistakes um, in just in the code in general. Uh, and then when you do make a mistake just yourself, uh, using uh, the backslash uh, bracket commands, they give you a, like a better explanation of what's actually gone wrong if you've made a mistake, like if you've left out a curly bracket or something, it'll tell you more exact what you what you like what you messed up. Uh, the reason you need math mode um, is mainly because uh, there's a lot of commands that won't work in text mode uh, that'll only work in math mode, uh, mainly stuff like uh, Greek letters and symbols um, and stuff like that. Um, and it's also just a lot easier to type maths in math mode. It'll automatically, like, for a lot of the symbols, it'll space in between. So, like, say, for example, if I get rid of the spaces here uh, in between all these, um, you'll see that it's still like it's still spaced properly. It, it, the, like the A and the B and the C aren't squished together with the plus and the equal sign. Um, whereas in uh, in text mode, it like a lot of the symbols are kind of squished together, so it doesn't really work as well. Uh, okay, the first thing I will show you in math mode is uh, subscript and superscript. Uh, these are all quite simple. Um, uh, say if you want to do a subscript B, it's just a underscore B. And it comes up like that. Uh, if you want to do, um, uh, I don't know, if you want to do a superscript, a superscript B, a to power B, it comes up like that. Uh, actually, let's put these in different lines. Um, if you want to have uh, more than just one character in the subscript or superscript, uh, you need to surround the text with curly brackets, which I mean here. So say if you want to do, I don't know, a subscript BC or whatever, um, you can't just do a, a underscore BC because uh, that'll only take the B as a, as a subscript. Uh, oh, I need to space it a little more. Uh, and it won't consider the C as a subscript. So what you need to do is surround this text with curly brackets. And then the same goes for um, superscripts. Um, you can combine subscripts and superscripts uh, pretty easily, um, just by, uh, it doesn't really matter what, what order you put them in, so if you want to do subscript B to the power of C, you can do it like that, or you can also uh, do it the other way around, A to the power of C, underscore B, and it works the exact same. 
see that they're the exact same. Um, I'll show you a few more things. Uh, fractions are done. Oh, I need to turn this math mode. Uh, fractions are done with command slash frac and then the numerator and then the denominator in curly brackets. Um, square roots are done just by using uh, slash sqrt. Oops. And then uh, curly brackets. Sorry. Um, if you want to do any other root uh, that isn't just a square root, uh, it's still uh, slash sqrt. Uh, but say if you want to do a cube root or whatever, uh, you put the uh, you put the number root in square brackets before the curly brackets and after the command uh, like this. Um, and so that that's how you type like the cube root of two, for example. Uh, sums and integrals are uh, done by just uh, by slash sum and slash int, uh, and then doing a subscript and superscript of where, of whatever um, you're adding or integrating over. Uh, so I don't know, we'll just do sum a to b, whatever. Then down here we'll do uh, slash int from a to b. Uh, and it just does the superscript and subscript the same way as just regular constants and variables. Um, limits are done quite similarly, um, where you put uh, the it's slash lim and then the subscript whatever you're um, uh, approaching. Um, you can do the approaching arrow uh, by doing slash two. So the, I don't know we're doing a to b, doing a slash a slash two b, and you'll see this comes out like that. And so like the slash two is the approaching arrow. Um, yeah, so I've done all of these in inline mode, um, but uh, most of these, uh, these ones, not really the square roots, but most of these uh, show up differently in display mode. Uh, and I'll show you what I mean. Um, it's the exact same um, co commands and all that. There's no difference in the commands, uh, but these all uh, show up differently in uh, display mode uh, rather than inline mode. I'll show you what I mean here. So I put all of these in display mode, and you see that some of these look a bit different. Um, subscripts and superscripts and all that kind of stuff don't really change in display mode. Um, so you'll see the fractions are a bit more spaced out and they're bigger. Uh, like in inline mode, they're kind of roughly the same size as just the text that you type. Uh, whereas in display mode, uh, they're spaced. There's more space in between the numbers and like the line that separates them, and they're just taller as well. Uh, square roots and roots in general don't really change. Uh, but sums, integrals, and limits do change. Uh, the sum changes quite a lot. Uh, the the superscript and subscript are actually put underneath and above uh, the like capital sigma. Uh, integral changes slightly, and the limit changes as well. Um, so you'll find that a lot of the time, uh, using display mode is better uh, when you're just for most things. Display mode is better. Uh, but say if you're just typing like a few things, like in a paragraph, you're just typing like an equation or something, uh, in a paragraph. Uh, inline mode is is super is better for that. Uh, say if we want to have a mixture of text and maths, uh, you can use either display mode or inline mode depending on how much text there is. Uh, but for this this example, I'll show you both ways. Uh, say if we're writing out Euler's equation, uh, we can use either inline or display mode. I'll use I'll do both examples here. Uh, 
Okay, so here I have them typed out in inline mode and display mode. Uh, now, the way I've typed it in display mode, um, apart from the fact that I spelled it wrong, um, it's actually not, like, it doesn't show up the way we want it to. Uh, it presumes that all of these are um, variables and it's just a product, product of all these variables. Uh, if we want it to uh, just be text, we have to do slash text and surround the text that we want in curly brackets. Um, even still, this, is, this isn't this is fully right. Uh, you'll notice that there's no space in between the colon and E. Uh, what we can do is we can um, we can put a manual space in between, like after the curly bracket uh, and this uh, this mats here. Um, or what you can do is you can just put a space in the text here and it'll come up as a space in here. Uh, and this is because like before with the, with the text I was showing you before, um, extra spaces don't matter. Uh, unless it's in text, like the text, there's like this considers it as no space in between because the space in uh, math mode doesn't really translate uh, on the PDF. So what you have to do is put a space in the actual text within the curly brackets, and that's how you that's how you space it up properly. Okay, so next I'll just move on to matrices. Um, you might not have seen matrices yet, uh, but don't worry, you'll be introduced to them soon enough. Uh, matrices are essentially just uh, arrays of numbers. Um. This is how you make a matrix. Uh, there are also a load of other ways that you can use matrices. Uh, that, like you can, sorry, you can type up matrices uh, using different packages. Uh, but this is the way that I that I know how to do it, and I think it's easy enough. Um, I'll just explain everything that's going on here. Uh, the slash left uh, round bracket and slash right round bracket essentially just surrounds the array with round brackets. Um, slash begin array um, and then slash end array uh, begins and ends um, the array of numbers that you want to put put like have your matrix as. Uh, the CCC uh, represents uh, three columns, which we have here. Uh, and then we have each entry separated by uh, an ampersand, and then each row separated by a double backslash. Uh, okay, here I just have the exact same code uh, typed out again, just spaced differently. Uh, this first one here, this first set of code, um, is all one line. Uh, it's not spaced out at all. Uh, there's no indents, there's no new lines, any of that. And it's all very squashed together, uh, but it still does work. The, like, it's still the exact same as the second one. Uh, but the second one is a lot more spaced out and all that. Um, I've gone onto a new line for each row. And I've also like skipped, I've left the commands on the different lines. Uh, and you, you can see that it looks a lot, like the, in the code, it looks a lot more like a matrix than just a line of code. Uh, I would recommend uh, trying to um, organize your matrices like this. Uh, because say if you if you're doing like a really big matrix where, where like the entries aren't just numbers or single variables or whatever, um, it, it's it's a lot easier to find where you've made a mistake. Uh, whereas if you made a mistake in this, you like you'd be spending ages trying to look for it. Uh, augmented matrices are done similarly, and um, just you, what you can do is just put put the vertical line bar in between the C's here, uh, and it'll uh, translate to a vertical line in between the columns here, uh, like that. Okay, earlier I kind of mentioned the slash left and slash right commands. Um, these are mainly used for brackets surrounding uh, matrices, uh, but they can, use, they can be used for anything. Um, say if you want to surround something with, I don't know, in this case we just use brackets. Uh, say if you want to, I don't know, surround a number with brackets. Um, for that you don't need, I should just put it in math mode. Um, you don't need um, any you don't need just your slash left or your slash right if you're just doing like if if the bracket is just one character tall like that that looks fine, uh, but say for example if you wanted to surround uh, a fraction with brackets, um say I don't know do one half whatever, and if you put uh, an open round bracket there and a close round bracket here. Uh, it won't expand to the size of the fraction. Uh, it'll just stay as just the one character tall bracket, and it looks shocking. Um, the way we can go about, we can solve this is the same as the matrix. We just do slash left and then slash right here, like so. And then everything in between uh, slash left and slash right, um, it'll expand the brackets to this to that size. So if you do that, um, it expands the bracket to the size of the fraction. It, it doesn't just make it massive like it doesn't make it like three blocks tall uh, for this it just makes it the size of the fraction uh, this works for anything that's taller than one character so like sums integrals limits and um, anything like that um we don't have to have uh, something on the left and the right for this to work and um, so say if you only want one thing bigger on one side but not the other um, an example of this is a piecewise function 
so say I don't know we want to oops uh, we want to write out the definition of the absolute value of x um, I'll just copy and paste the virtual bar because it's not a keyword okay so say we want x is equal to uh, we want it to have we want it to be the, the absolute value of x is x when x is greater than or equal to zero and it's minus x when x is less, less than zero uh, so what you can do is we'll do slash left um, curly bracket now slash left curly bracket won't actually work uh, for a curly bracket and um, because the curly bracket is used in so many other things and um, so we, so if you just want to actually type out a curly bracket in maths mode um, or actually in any mode um, you need to type slash curly bracket just for this case uh, what I'll do is I'll, ty I'll type slash right just for now uh, and I'll type the curly bracket um, so yeah and we want to have this kind of on two lines so what we can do is we can start an array similar to our matrix uh, we want one column um, and we want is x um, text space it when x and then the command for greater than or equal to is just gec slash gec uh, zero and we want to skip the line it's minus x when x is less than zero Right. Now, okay, this will give us a piecewise function, uh, but it surrounds the whole thing in curly brackets. Uh, usually, when you're doing piecewise functions, um, you'll see like the format that it, that it takes is just an open curly bracket, but no end, uh, no closed curly bracket. Um, but if we just if we get rid of this, uh, it won't quite work. You can see already that there's errors popping up. Um, now, like it will show up correctly, but it'll still give you errors here. Uh, if you want uh, only like a left and not a right, what you can do is for the right, you can do slash, you can do no slash, you can just do a, a full stop. Um, and that's how you kind of, like that's how you uh, fit this this bracket to the size of everything after it, but you don't want a closed one. Uh, another example is, say if you're doing like the evaluated at sign, and um, want to do an example here, um, say you want to do, I don't know, do I, dx evaluated at, um, I don't know, x is, I don't know, whatever, zero, whatever. Um, okay, so uh, the evaluated at, like the, the vertical line bar uh, doesn't extend up the way, and that's because we haven't done any left or right. Uh, so what we can do is, uh, so same again, we do slash left, but this time we do a dot, and then over this side we do slash right, and it'll automatically take this as the thing that you want on the right side. And so when we do that, it extends up nicely like that. Okay, now we'll move on to uh, the equation commands, which is what the AMS math package is mainly for. Um, all of the following commands automatically put everything uh, within them uh, in display math mode. Uh, the first command that I'll show you is a uh, slash begin equation, or slash end equation. Um, so you, when you type it out, it automatically types out slash end equation. Um, I don't know, just do a plus b equals c or whatever. Keep it simple. I see here that uh, it automatically numbers it. Uh, so similarly to the section and subsection commands, um, it automatically puts a number beside it. And if we don't want a number, uh, instead of putting an asterisk here, we put an asterisk after uh, equation, still within the curly brackets. I need to do it both times, um, and it'll get rid of the number. Uh, but you'll notice that this is the exact same as just typing out uh, a plus b equals c in display math mode. So begin equation asterisk isn't really used much at all. Okay, this next command, um, begin multiline, not begin multiline, begin multiline. Uh, is for when you have like an equation that's that you want to span a few lines um, and like it's really long and you, like it doesn't really fit in one line and you want to like kind of space it between like two or three even three lines and um, here's I have an example of just uh, just the, the Taylor series which you meet a lot in physics and maths and um, the way you just do it it's the same as before just slash begin and then multiline and I put an asterisk similar to equation uh, to get rid of the numbering uh, you type out the equation uh, just as you would before um, but whenever you want to go onto a new line, you just do the double backslash, um, similar to how we do it in text. Um, the command here, slash L dots, is just for um, ellipses. Uh, okay, next we'll move on to the align command. Um, 
this is probably the command that you'll be using the most when it comes to equations and stuff. Um, as the name suggests, it aligns uh, a group of equations uh, quite nicely. Uh, it works similar to an array uh, in that it, uh, it uses uh, an anthersand to separate terms uh, and then it kind of groups them and aligns them accordingly. So say if you just write out the same equation twice, just have 2x1 plus 1, and then on the next line we have 1 plus 1 plus 2. Uh, so if you just leave it like that, um, you'll notice that it doesn't really align it around anything, it's kind of just centered, it doesn't, like, it looks okay, I guess, but uh, say if you want it to align around the equal sign, like you want the equal sign, you want the equal signs to be above and below each other. Uh, what you do is, uh, similar to an array, you just put an anthersand before the uh, equal sign on both lines. And then it'll align it quite nice. Um, it works similar to an array, uh, like I said, the anthersand separates the terms and aligns them accordingly. Um, it also works, say, if you um, if you have one variable or something equal two different things, and you want to kind of have that nicely done. Um, I'll show you what I mean here. Say if we have, I don't know, I'll just pluck an example from special relativity. If you have e equals mc squared, you also have um, e equals um, gamma m not c squared. Uh, so here's two equations, and uh, now we can uh, we can do we can align them the same as before. It's not really much point though because it's already the kind of same anyway. Uh, but say we don't want this second e, we kind of just want like e equals this, and then it also equals this. Uh, you don't have to have a ter term before the understand, so you can just get rid of that there. Uh, and actually, in this case, I'll just get rid of the uh, asterisk for numbering. Uh, so you can see that even though there's no term here, it still aligns equal signs. Uh, when you just put an anthersand on its own with nothing before it, it'll just consider, like, it'll just presume that like, there's n the, the term before it is just null um, and it'll still align it nicely. Uh, and if you don't uh, put in an asterisk, it'll uh, number each line. Um, it Like, each of these will be a numbered equation. Okay, say we want to align uh, a long, a really long equation uh, with just a short equation. Uh, what we can do is, we can do it as before, we can just put the anthersands like this, like so. And it, it'll align it accordingly. But say if you want to have, for this example, if you want to have all the positive ones uh, on one line and then the negative ones on the next line, um, it's formatted quite differently. Uh, I'll just type out here. That's the way it works is you put a curly bracket there and then understand there instead. Uh, and then you can uh, put them to the next line. Sorry, one second. Yeah, and then it, it'll align it like this. This is what I kind of meant um, when I wanted like the the positive ones on the top and the negative ones on the bottom. Um, it's it's formatted quite differently. Um, if you leave out the curly brackets, uh, it will uh, there'll be spacing issues. Just compiles. Uh, yeah, there'll be spacing issues. Uh, that happens whenever you put the understand uh, after the the equal sign uh, as opposed to before it. Um, and the reason that it's a after the equal sign is because on the second line we don't want an equal sign. So there's like there's no, um, we want the uh, the second term to be kind of everything after the equal sign on each line. So that's why the understand is after the equal sign uh, instead of before it. Uh, the align command can be used in other ways than just aligning equations vertically. Uh, for example, you can align equations in columns like I have here. Uh, it, it's used the exact same way as the examples I showed you. Um, here I have uh, everything before the equal sign as one term, and then from the equal sign to the end here is another term. Uh, same again, everything before the equal sign is another term, and then from the equal sign on is another term. Uh, and it aligns them the exact same as it would, it would align an array. Um, and it's pretty straightforward, uh, as you can see here. Okay, say if you wanted to just gather a group of equations, um, you didn't want to align them about their equal sign, uh, you, just want the, you just wanted them grouped and centered, uh, the command for that is gather. Uh, here I just have, um, as examples, I just have the sine and cosine rules, and you can see that they're just centered, uh, they're not aligned with their equal sign or anything like that, they're just grouped and centered. Now you might think that the gather command is just the same as typing two separate lines of the display math mode, uh, but they're not quite, quite the exact same. Um, the gather command kind of uh, bundles them more closely, 
Um, and it's probably it's it's that's used when like you want to show like a group of equations all together at once. Um, whereas the display math mode uh, kind of spaces them out. There's a slight space difference. Um, so if you're if you're kind of just showing equations uh, as one group, uh, I'd recommend using the gather command. Otherwise, uh, use the display math mode. Okay, next I'll move on to uh, horizontal spacing. Uh, it's similar to vertical spacing, um, in the sense that you can use the command slash h space. Uh, for example, I don't know, we'll do four millimeters between I don't know, A and B, uh, and it comes out how you'd expect. Uh, what you can do instead, and uh, what's probably a bit easier, is you can use other commands uh, which are a lot shorter uh, and, and which have a specific length uh, associated with them. Uh, so I'll show you them all now. Uh, so you can either have no space in between them, you can, you can do uh, slash comma. There is slash colon. There is slash semicolon. And there is a slash. And there is slash quad. And there's slash q quad. And these have all uh, different lengths associated with them. Uh, as you can see, they go, they get bigger in size. Um, I usually use either slash colon or slash semicolon when I'm uh, spacing things out. Um, you'll find a lot in math mode that a lot of the symbols that you use uh, won't have won't automatically put space in either side of them. Uh, so so like um, for example, like plus and equals and minus and all that, they will have an automatic spacing between them. Uh, but for a lot of the the command symbols, like sometimes the Greek letters or like some symbols, they don't have spacing either side of them, so you'd have to use uh, the spacing. I usually use slash colon or slash semicolon. Finally, I'll cover new commands. Say we have to type out something multiple times throughout a document, and we don't want to have to type out all of the commands or the text or the maths or whatever every time we want to write it. What we can do is set a new command. The way it works is slash new command, and then two sets of curly brackets. The first set of curly brackets will be the, com the, the name of the command you want to set, and then the second set will be the actual command that you want to replace. Uh, so, for, so for example, if we want to replace the sum to infinity, uh, let's call it, I don't know, slash empty sum, uh, and we want to actually replace the sum to infinity, uh, so we do slash sum, underscore, uh, minus one, to infinity, uh, slash empty is just the command for infinity. And if we recompile, uh, nothing has changed. Uh, this is because we haven't actually told the code to put anything out in the PDF, we just set a new command. So if you want to actually write out the sum to infinity, we can do slash empty sum. Uh, and you'll notice that actually I should put this in math mode because this command uh, should be in math mode here. It, like it won't really work otherwise, it, like you'll come up with errors. Uh, but if you put it in math mode, you'll see that we have the sum to infinity. Okay, now say we want to set a new command for something with parameters and not just the same single output like we did here. Uh, we still do new command and then two sets of curly brackets but now in between the curly brackets we do a set of square brackets uh, like before the first set of curly brackets is for the name of the command and the last set is for the command you're replacing but now in the set of square brackets you put the number of param parameters associated with the command um, as an example we'll just uh, make a new command for uh, a generic sum between two points uh, we'll call it define sum uh, and there are two parameters associated with it, the start point and the end point. And I'll type out the uh, command we're replacing, just leave the things blank. Now, in place of the parameters, uh, you type uh, the, the number of the parameter. So here we'll type number one and number two. Uh, and as before, if we, if we recompile, uh, nothing changes because we haven't told the code to do anything. Uh, so now if we do slash define sum, and say we want to do a sum from point A to point B, um, instead of doing the uh, underscore and superscript, uh, what we can do is uh, we do two sets of uh, curly brackets uh, because there's two parameters and in the first one uh, we um, type what, whatever the number one is here so we type a as our first point and then uh, in the second one we type out whatever the second parameter is which is b and here we have a sum from a to b uh, and it's not in math mode again it should be in math mode because the this only works in math mode 
and so here we just have sum from a to b uh, say if we want i don't know say we'll we'll type out the sum to infinity using this this command using our define sum command and um, so in the first parameter we want i equals one and in the second we want in infinity and again we have the sum from one to infinity as before uh, but this time we we this is a more generic one a generic command uh, with parameters uh, here are two more examples of commands that, that i've just set uh, the first one is an easier way to write three by three matrices and then the second one is just for evaluated integrals and um, for new commands you can have up to nine parameters uh, so if you're uh, doing new commands for matrices uh, three by three is the biggest you can do okay so that's everything that i've used in my assignments in first year plus a few things that i would have used if i knew about them I've definitely only barely scratched the surface of the things you can do in LaTeX. This is really only a basic introduction to help with typing up assignments. Uh, I hope I've covered everything that you need to get started, but if there's anything I haven't, it really is quite easy to find what you need online. Uh, some helpful sites include the Overleaf help page, Stack Exchange, and Stack Overflow, uh, as well as this site that lists commands for all of the math symbols, Greek letters, and loads of other things. Uh, I'll make sure the links for all of them are in the description. Uh, the best way to get to know how to use LaTeX is by starting to use it, so I'd recommend typing up absolutely anything like a past assignment to get a feel of things. With that being said, I'd like to thank you for your time, and I hope it's been a help.